So here is the model loaded into Blender. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a material to it um, so that it will shine because we need a shiny surface like a metal. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a glossy material. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my light. There's one light source here. And um, let's just see where it is. Okay, oh, I don't want to rotate it. I want to move it up to here. Uh, let me see. All right, that looks good to me. And uh, so there is my light source and I'm going to kind of do a pseudo rendering. And so here you can see right away, you've got uh, the light source here. It's not a very strong light source. It is curving in um, towards the magnet, which is right here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to increase the strength of the light a little bit. Okay, so you can see that it is in fact kind of curving around here and here, and there's a little blobby thing right here. And as I move the light around, it follows. And so um, modeling with just one light source actually is a lot better because it's, it's a lot less confusing, I think. When you have a whole bunch of lights like the fire cell has, there's lights crisscrossing and it's very confusing. And so um, this is what uh, Blender looks like with just one light source. Okay, so um, we can add other light sources, but for now we're just going to investigate this one light source. So on the left here, what you are seeing is the actual ferro cell. And with the magnet underneath, you can kind of see the little black area right here. Uh, and you can see there's my light source, which is just a, a yellow LED. And you can see that the light is curving this way and this way. And in a similar manner in my simulation, light is curving this way and this way. Okay, so also in my simulation, there's a little white blobby thing right here. And uh, there's also kind of a, a white blobby thing right here. And that is, and it is in exactly the right location. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, just quickly for uh, do an alpha blending between these two images so you can see how they are registered. And so the, this was, um, these are actually calibrated images, so they're not just overlaid, but they are in fact uh, the same geometry because I use the magnet of a certain size and I use the ferrocell of a certain size to generate my animation. And so you can see in my um, model predicts a little sort of a, a light blobby thing here and when I alpha blend to the actual ferrocell image there is in fact a light uh, reflection, uh, strong reflection going on here. Now the reason my image looks so fuzzy is because the particles that I generated were about 200 times bigger than they would be in the actual nanoparticle. So the actual nanoparticles uh, are about 200 times smaller than the particles that I generated, but for some reason my um, visualizer, my um, STL file renderer would not allow me to generate um, particles too small. So um, that's fine. I, I could not have generated enough particles. I don't have enough memory to generate enough particles at the nano scale to get to uh, run on my computer. And so I went sort of like halfway so that I could generate enough particles to show the effect. But, um, you know, the particles are much bigger than they would be and therefore you get a, a much fuzzier picture. It's kind of like the pixels are bigger, so the picture is not going to be as clear. But clearly you can see a correlation here. The, uh, the reason for the curvature um, is the specular reflection off the nanoparticles that are aligned in a certain pattern um, or in the presence of a magnet. 
So um, next what I did was I just did an outline of this region. I drew like a thin line because normally in the ferro cell you see a thin line. And so I drew kind of a thin line. I made a an outline um, of the, um, the path that the light appears to be taking in this image. And what I did was I took um, I took each one of these, okay, then I cut and pasted them, and uh, let me put that back there, let's see if I can do this right, and then I turned it a bit, and then I placed it into, you know, the image. And so you can, clearly you can see if you took a whole bunch of these and put them into a circle, you're going to get something that looks very much like what you see in the ferro cell. Okay, I think this is actually one of Ken's images because there's a light missing, but regardless, you can see how, you know, just by doing this quick, um, and I've, I did this, I showed this before in another video, so this is not new, but um, I just wanted to show you that if we had a bunch of light sources, pinpoint light sources around the ferrocell like you normally see, then you can see how easily you could get the hypotrochoid pattern that has, you know, made the ferrocell so popular. Now, one thing I want to point out, in the actual ferrocell, there are going to be other effects because there is a glass in between um, the nanoparticles and your eyes and what you're seeing and so there is going to be some reflection and some refraction and some diffraction and there's going to be all you know all the effects are going to be there but um you know basically um you know this the simulated image is very much um very much lining up nicely with the actual image and again uh, these are not just overlaid but they are calibrated in the sense that I used all of the dimensions of the you know the magnet and the strength of the magnet and the distance of the ferrofluid from you know from the magnet I you know tried to simulate it as accurately as possible and so you know that's a pretty good fit to me to me that's a very good fit and so, you know, it kind of leaves little doubt. It, it leaves little doubt that the uh, specular reflection, because I am not, I have not implemented a lens. I don't have a, a piece of glass on top of my nanoparticles in my simulation. Um, so it seems that these curved lines and all the other uh, visual artifacts that you see in the ferrocell can be easily explained using um, using nanoparticles using um, by using um, to generating a bunch of random magnetic moments and um, you know turning them into cylinders and then adding light sources like I do in blender in order to get um, the effects that we see in the ferro cell and so again, you know, the particles that I'm using are much, 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 much bigger than what you actually have in the ferro lens. And that is because, I, you know, I have a limit to the number of particles I can model in my laptop computer. And so I compromised and, and went a little bit halfway to a size that is, is you know, kind of reasonable. So, you know, this if you zoom in on them, you can actually see them. Whereas you need a microscope to see the nanoparticles in the ferro fluid. And so... Um, so that is it. That was how I um, generated the ferro cell image that I showed in, in a previous video. Uh, I just want to show a few more other images that I did. Uh, this again is two light sources but with a green one and a red one. And you can see the red one has a red blob here and the green one has a green blob there. And so, and those would line up with these two uh, features that you see in the actual ferro cell. Um, this was an orientation I thought was kind of cool. When you put lights, so this just has a light source here and a light source here, and this is the pattern it made. Um, this is looking at it from one side, and this is looking at it from the other side of the ferro lens. And of course, um, this uh, is this was from the video I showed, uh, I, I uploaded yesterday, 
And, and this was the very first ferrocell image that I ever made. So the, this was from the very first ferrocell simulation I ever did. And this is images from the very first ferrocell that I ever, um, um, you know, used or took a picture of. Okay, so um, when you put the light in the middle, then this is kind of what it looks like. Okay, so when you put in the light in the middle, you see... Um, you know, it does not give the hypertrochoid pattern. It gives uh, the spherical geometry of more like the isopotentials and less like the hypertrochoid pattern. And that kind of reminded me of this, right? So what I'm seeing in the ferrocell is uh, potentially a glimpse into the cosmos in that um, you know, it will tell you what pattern. So it, I found this pattern and it looked very much like this uh, nebula here, which I believe is the hourglass nebula. And, um, you know, so you, there are a lot of similarities between these two, um, these two objects. And so what does that tell you? Uh, what it tells me is that there is a freakishly large magnet right there. So black holes are magnets. Magnets are black holes. No, black holes are magnets, super freakishly big magnets. And that's, you know, that's basically my um, fractal black hole theory that black holes are scalable, that black holes are basically freakishly large magnets. And um, there is a self-similarity between cosmological black holes, aka magnets, and human scale uh, magnets, which... Um, you know, when you throw some light on it, gives uh, certain patterns that we often see in cosmology. And so, you know, I think it's kind of interesting that the, um, let me just see if I can alpha blend this one. Okay, that, you know, it's, it's more of these textures out here. Okay, these textures out here, which you often see in cosmological objects and that are maybe very difficult to explain uh, uh, unless, you know, there is, you know, something going on, unless there is a self-similarity between what is going on here and what is going on here. And that is the path I'm taking in my research is to try and, you know, find that self-similarity between what's going on at the cosmological scale and what's going on at the human scale and possibly what's going on at the quantum scale, right? So, um, yeah, so that, I think that's all I have for, for now. Um, this uh, proves to me beyond a reasonable doubt that specular reflection is the cause for all the effects that we see in the ferrocell, um, aside from some other minor effects, such as refraction and diffraction and diffusion and, you know, any other um, thing that a lens is responsible for. And so, and lights, because we're talking about the light sources too. So it's very important to know where the light sources are. The light sources in different positions um, create different patterns. And so um, that's a very important point to make is that you know, the pattern that you see in the ferrocell is highly dependent on where you place the lights. So finally, I just want to say thank you to AB Science for being so forthcoming with me about how he generated his ferrocell simulation in this video. And um, it was very insightful and, uh, you know, actually going through the process of doing this myself has given me a lot of insights into um, magnetism itself and how the um, how to use the um, you know magnetic moments in my in a program and generate the you know the what you see back here the um, generating the uh, iron filings if you want to call them that the nano iron filings in order to simulate the ferro cell so um, this is something I've always wanted to do but I didn't really have um, a plan I didn't have a program to actually generate the isopotentials and I was too lazy to generate it myself so uh, finding that uh, Python code um, was, you know, was a huge boost because it gave me exactly the functionality I needed, which was to generate random magnetic moments in a thin layer to simulate the thin layer between the two pieces of glass and the ferrocell. 
So I needed to be in control in, in order to do this myself. And so that was the missing piece of the puzzle that I didn't have. Clearly I can do all the other stuff like generating the tubes and uh, running it through Blender. And so the missing piece of the puzzle was um, this guy here, the Magpie Lib, the free Python package for magnetic field computation. So this is what allowed me to actually run the simulation that I've always wanted to do, um, but didn't have all the pieces of the puzzle. And so thank you, AB, for showing me the way. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're all having a great day. And uh, well, I'll be back.